Transformers The Last Night Hot Rod. There's a lot to get into with this character. They made him French for some reason. He's a cool Lamborghini. I really liked his design, despite the weird little duck lips. And uh, his original toy was not good. It wasn't. Essentially, Hasbro saw Hot Rod's design in The Last Night, and they're like, oh, he's a Lamborghini. You know who else was a Lamborghini? Lockdown. So let's just redo Lockdown. And that's what they did. And that's what we got. Uh, you can see from the waist down, he's essentially locked down. The transformations lockdowns, he's got lockdowns flat chest, and that Age of Extinction lockdown was not a very good figure. I did old versus new on lockdown, and I roasted that figure pretty hard. And uh, I was going through some figures with my brother, and he ended up with my old lockdown to uh, sell at some point. And I was just looking at it again, and I'm like, man, this thing's trash. And I think the Hot Rod figure is better. Uh, I transformed it before this video just to kind of make sure I remembered how to do it. And it's it's better. It's fun. I still enjoy it as a toy. Uh, the base figure of Age of Extinction Lockdown actually originates from Dark of the Moon Roadbuster. And that figure I actually very much like. Uh, so much, in fact, I didn't really feel the need to get the Studio Series. When it comes to the, the Wreckers in Dark of the Moon, I kind of preferred them when they didn't have all the Wreckery stuff on them. I wish we got Human Alliance, all of them, in, like, nice model car style in the NASCAR versions. But we never did. Anyways, old tangent out of the way. We finally got a new Studio Series Hot Rod. And it's not Walmart exclusive. It's deluxe. It's an original figure. And it is great. It is one of my favorite Studio Series uh, figures by far, especially when it comes to Autobots. I love it. It is very good. Uh, <laughs> I took it with me, actually, when I visited my brother and was going through his, all the Transformers he had. I took it with me, and I transformed it several times during the visit. When we were just chilling, hanging around, I transformed this hot rod because I had just gotten it, and I just wanted to mess with it, and it's, it's great. It is a great figure. I've transformed him so many times. I hope I wouldn't have a problem transforming him for this video, but we'll just have to wait and see. So, you can see right off the bat, uh, the Last Night one is very tall, and the Studio Series is not. Believe it or not, the Last Night figure was actually very tall by st uh, Last Night standards back when the movie came out in 2017. It's just an oddly tall and lanky figure. Like, you can see it's very thin. And the old one at least has a little bit more meat going on. He's got a little bit more. He actually does have the accurate little door winglets hanging off his back too, which is really cool. Yeah, this one is uh, definitely an odd one. <laughs> definitely very odd. Just as a little extra bonus as well, uh, I will be showing the World War version of Hot Rod very briefly when I talk about the Studio Series. But you can kind of see the side-by-sides. One of the main differences I actually really like about this one are the colors. Uh, I really love the silver paint and like this gunmetal color for the car. And this is more of like a brownish gray in a way. It still has some metallic look, but it's definitely not as, you know, gunmetal as this. And he doesn't have any silver. It's all gray plastic. Uh, definitely wish he had some silver. I also wish he had a little bit more orange on the arms, personally. I'm kind of missing some orange on the arm on this one. But I got to say... This one didn't even get the orange right at all. They made him red. <laughs> That's not right at all. He's orange, not red. This one is definitely significantly more accurate. I'm very happy with this one. I really have no general complaints. It's very nicely made. So let's take a deeper dive at this last night version. So oddly enough, Hot Rod as a character was exclusive to Walmart during Transformers The Last Night. And uh, this figure never really showed up in Walmart stores. It was available online for a time. That's actually where I got mine. I actually got mine for Walmart in-store pickup. And I went to the customer service desk and I grabbed him. Uh, but in-stores itself never, never happened. Except for when Ollie's got a ton of them. Uh, that was like a year or two after it was supposed to be released. So essentially, this was a Walmart exclusive that just never made it to stores. It's like Walmart just let it sit in a warehouse and decided to just bulk sell it off to Ollie's. I don't know. That's 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 what they did. And you may be noticing uh, there's no weapons. Yeah, he just didn't come with any. He just didn't. I gave him some little weapons to, so he would have something to hold, but he didn't come with his, you know, my weapon will stop the time. He didn't come with that, which was like his signature weapon. It, 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 nothing. He just didn't come with anything. 
Uh, <laughs> I do have to say, though, the head sculpt is nice. Again, you can see he's got the, the weird duck lips going on. But it's a nicely sculpted head. I kind of wish the head would be nicer if it had more of like a bumblebee vent at the mouth instead of the weird duck lips. Because, I mean, you can see just how odd his head is shaped. Man, some of the Michael Bay Transformers designs, like, some of them are cool, and others, like, I just don't understand. I don't. I've never really gotten past the, the duck lips on Last Night Hot Rod. Never have, probably never will. <laughs> so, how does he pose? Ball joint at the head, ball joints at the shoulders. Uh, he's got these kibbly bits on his shoulders that make him look very odd and bulky. I do have to say, though, they did remold the arms to actually give him the wheels, at the the elbow, which I appreciate, but he still has the wheels at the at the biceps, so that's uh, it's kind of odd looking. Uh, his chest is totally flat. Like, look at that, totally flat. When obviously it should be more of a traditional hood chest. So it kind of reminds me of that big Ultimate Bumblebee that came out in 2007, where the chest is just flat, and also you can spread it out too. Uh, that's how it does for transformation. So he looks not only flat but broad. Nice. Never call a woman that, just FYI. Uh, <laughs> the hips, very tight, clicky joints. Move out. Uh, it's Lockdown's legs, man. It's Lockdown's legs. You can see those are Lockdown's feet. That's, that's It's just Lockdown's legs. They did not change that whatsoever because that just goes inside the car. That's simply what they do. It's a very odd, very janky figure. Never really posed too well. But I got to say, though, the paint application, even though the base color of red is not accurate, it should be orange. Gotta say, the colors always made it look kinda pretty. And, let's take a nice look at the Studio Series one. So one thing I do wanna do, uh, let's try to get him standing in a dynamic pose. I actually wanna briefly compare to this. This is basically just a Bumblebee retool. I don't wanna go into it too much. The main thing I wanna talk about is he has silver, which I like, and this one doesn't, which I don't like. But I also want to discuss the head sculpts, because the heads are very similar. Uh, you can see this one, uh, the duck lips are a little bit more pronounced. Uh, but it has silver on it, which I like. And this one, how I like to view the head, uh, if you kind of ignore the lips, you almost see that, and you almost think it's like a big, you know, speaker mouth, almost like Bumblebee, and it just kind of looks better. Because I always thought Hot Rod was supposed to be like a, com like a companion to Bumblebee. He's got like the big circular eyes like Bumblebee does. I thought he was supposed to be almost an equivalent. Uh, but just, you know, a different version of, like, a scout, you know. He was just another scout class transformer. And, uh, yeah, I mean, I don't know. I think a more accurate head sculpt like this does make it look a little better. And the lips not being painted silver does make them a little less standy outy. Uh, I do kind of like that. But the thing with this guy is just the proportion, man. Look at that. It's gorgeous. The proportion is just gorgeous on this guy. He does come with his My Weapon Will Stop the Time blaster, which is really cool. Let me just get that out of his hand, though. Yeah, I mean, his articulation is really nice. Ball joint, ball joint, swivel. Uh, he's got a swivel at the wrist as well. He actually has a waist joint, which is nice. Ball joint. It's funny how Studio Series still uses ball joints, but I'm happy that they are able to not make them super loose. He has a hinge at the knee, and his ankles are very nice. He can move them very far forward, very far back. You have to have them in a very certain position to get any ankle tilt out of them. But still, I mean, the ankles are nice. The, the figure just looks nice. As I mentioned, I do appreciate how they're able to get the little winglet detail. It's not as accurate. They're sticking out the side when they're more, like, inset into his back. But come on, this is supposed to be a toy that transforms. I'm happy they were able to do what they were able to do with it. Uh, man, I just, I love the physique of him. I love the big, broad shoulders. I love the, the fact he actually has the proper chest. I love the little orange trimming. He's just really, he's just really pretty, man. He's a nice looking figure. He's definitely, I think, going to be up there among some of my favorite studio series. He is, he is very, very good. His posability, let's try to get him in a similar pose that the uh, old deluxe is in. You can see you've got more of a head tilt. You can get the legs moving a lot more. You can get the ankles moving more. You got an ankle tilt this time around. So yeah, I mean, just look, look at that. Same pose. Same pose. Look at that difference. Wild. It's wild. So much better, the new one. The new one's so much better. 
So let's do a little bit of transforming, a little transformy time. I've got 10 minutes left until my phone's out of memory and I don't want to have to, you know, transfer files and all that just to finish the video. So let's, uh, let's, let's get on with this. So this one, like I've stated, is essentially Age of Extinction Lockdown, except it's uh, slightly modified. You can see the arms. I actually do kind of like how the arms transform. But it does kind of leave you with these funny-looking mantis arms in uh, mid-transformation. I always thought this armature was very odd how this worked. It's very odd how that armature just totally just comes up. But then you can see a decent chunk of the car is just sitting on his back. And, uh, well, I mean, you can kind of see what's going on here. One of the most difficult parts is getting everything at the front lined up because the uh, the windshield wants to be incorrectly tabbed. The legs, they just fold inside the vehicle. That's all they do. They just tab together and they awkwardly fold around the head. You can see, just kind of get it positioned just right. Get the legs positioned right. Tab it in. And then it just kind of folds inside the vehicle. And then the arms form the shell of the car. It's literally just this giant shell. Oh, I forgot. You have these little panels you have to flip out. And then you just kind of close the arms around the shell. And it takes a little bit of finagling, but we'll get there. We'll get there. It's a pretty fun and smooth transformation, I have to admit. Like... A big reason why I was able to get rid of that Age of Extinction lockdown was because I'm like, well, I still have the toy. It's just Hot Rod. Now, granted, it's not a good Hot Rod, but it's, you know, not a bad toy. Uh, I think the best version of it is the Age of Extinction, or not Age of Extinction, is the Dark of the Moon Roadbuster by far. You can see where I'm having issues tabbing the front in. There we go. It's pretty much lined up. Last step, let's get these little back bits in. And there we go. And believe it or not, this is pretty much the mode this guy is staying in for the rest of his life. Because the robot mode's kind of jank, but this vehicle mode is so slick. That is nice looking. I am a big fan of this alt mode. That just, mm, that just looks really good. Might be able to like get a push pin in there and like hang it on the wall or something. That'd look nice. This is a nice alt mode. I love the gunmetal gray color. I love the trimming. It's not the right color trimming, but it still looks nice. I like the silver rims. Again, I am missing the silver on the Studio Series, but I gotta say, this is this is a slick car. I'm really digging that. However, the Studio Series transformations is too darn fun. I just enjoy it too much. That's my problem. This is such a fun figure, man. I love how much of the feet uncurl and form the back of the car. It's very uh, unusual and very rare that feet actually contribute greatly to an alt mode in Transformers, but it's always appreciated. I, I, it's something I just kind of noticed more recently. It's Feet don't really do much. Oftentimes they just fold away. So it's kind of cool when the feet actually form something, you know? I can appreciate that. So get the feet all kind of tidy and put together. There's a lot of hinges to work with, but once you get them together, you got them together. So there's the pretty much the bottom half of the car done. We will rotate the waist. That will be necessary for the transformation. And there's some stuff in the way, but it's not too bad. It's funny, uh, similar pieces that fold out on the old one fold out on the new one as well. I do like how this panel uh, actually clips into that panel. It keeps the backpack very nice and sturdy and stable. However, we'll rotate this around for the transformation. And that will connect with that in the alt mode. But let's do some stuff, some work with the chest first. So the arms will very similarly fold out like the other one. Make sure the hands are straight. And then one of the biggest steps, I love how the chest are on sliders. The chest is on sliders. So you slide the chest out just a little bit. And then you start uncurling all this inner working and stuff that ended up on the back of the old one ends up being inside him on this new one. You do have a little bit of clearance issue with the head, but once you get that out of the way, you're all good to go. Uh, I do believe it's a little nicer to turn the head around on this figure, but let's get the, the hood together. I've transformed this thing so many times. <laughs> I had so much fun with it. Uh, it is a little bit of a, a fiddle 
a little bit of a fiddly guy, but it's nothing too severe. It's not like, oh my gosh, this is such a nightmare. Uh, but you can see my, my methods of transforming figures are often just mush the parts until it fits together. It's just more fun that way for me. <laughs> so you can see the arms will need to more fully go inside the body. But once they do, they do. And you can see how the arms kind of have this natural contour to go around. And we're pretty much there. Pretty much just have to line things up and tidy it together. I only have six minutes to finish the video. Oh, no. But I think we'll get there. I think we will. Just got to line things up. That's lined up. That's lined up. Lined up. You can see everything just kind of pop, 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 pop satisfying it's very satisfying when everything just pops together on a robot takes a little bit of time takes a little bit of effort like you can see there's like three tabs you got to line up between that back wing and the arm but once you do you do and you end up with a really nice car again i feel like the color is not as slick as the original i feel like it you know would have benefited from some slight you know, more gunmetally look as well as some more silver going on. But there we go. We got him. There is a studio series last night, Hot Rod. And this, again, very slick. Also makes me realize this one's missing the spoiler. Um, I don't think he included the spoiler. That's the holes for the hinges. I just think straight up this figure just didn't have the spoiler. <laughs> I just think they just straight up omitted it. Oh, uh, that's interesting. However, I gotta say... Um, you know, they both look nice. Got to give it to both of them. You can see, though, for how much bigger this was in robot mode, it's not that much bigger in the vehicle mode. It's kind of funny seeing that. This one just uses the parts so much more intelligently. This one is a much more intelligent design. I mean, look at that. You see the arms. You see the head. Like, you see how the legs largely formed parts of the car, while this is just legs. Mm, legs. And then the arms just make these thin panels on the side. Very interesting comparison. Very, very interesting. Which one do I prefer? Well, it's freaking obvious. But I gotta say, I, I do like the color and I do like the alt mode on this one. It's definitely one I have no intention of getting rid of in my collection. Man, it's so jarring to me. I just realized for the first time he doesn't have the spoiler. <laughs> but yeah, when it comes to weapon storage, I, you know me, I'm not too worried about it. I mean, you can tab it right here, I think. Yeah, you can tap it there if you want. There you go. Weapon storage, yay. All right, there we go. Old versus new. Last night versus Studio Series Hot Rod. I think there is a very clear winner here. Studio Series is one of the best Studio Series Deluxes I think has ever been released. I'm so happy with this Hot Rod. I very highly recommend it. If you're a Transformers uh, collector, and if you want to dabble into what you know the best of the Michael Bay Studio Series figures can offer... This Hot Rod's a good choice. It's a very good choice. I don't get all of the Studio Series Autobots because I find many of them very finicky and very difficult to work with, but not really with the Hot Rod. I mean, you saw there was a lot of tabs to line up. It took a little bit to get everything together, but you do. It's it's doable. It's not like, oh my gosh, it'll, things keep popping out. Uh, you know, you're not tearing your hair out trying to transform a toy. It, it's doable. It works. It's fun. It's intuitive. It's great. This is one of the best robots of 2022. And this thing, well, it was locked down with a with a new coat of paint and a new upper half. Very odd release. Not only the figure itself, but also how it managed to get out to people. Uh, so yeah, am I going to keep the old one? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I have a whole shelf full of hot rods. I did a YouTube shorts on it. I'll just throw that guy on it. Maybe, maybe hang him up in alt mode with a push pin next to the shelf or something. I don't know. Might keep them in robot mode. We'll just have to wait and see. Alrighty, there we go. Thank you guys so much for watching. Special shout out to the patrons of Patreon as always. Thank you all so much for the continued support. Alrighty, there we go. Thanks for watching. Have a great one, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.